Bonjour. Bonjour. Bonjour Marie. Bonjour Bertrand. How are you? I'm good. We are back in Le Marais, so okay. I'm excited. Back in Le Marais on a bright sunny day, which is great. Mm -hmm. A bit chilly, but it's uh, November after all. <laughs> We are My Private Paris, a boutique travel agency in Paris, specialized in custom tours and itineraries. Since April, we have been filming one tour per week. Yes. And we are in Paris during the second phase of our lockdown here. We are allowed to be outside for one hour uh, per day. And so we have decided to share this hour with you. Yes. And we want to show you our favorite places in Paris. Today it's episode number four. Mm -hmm. uh, we are in the fourth district and we start right off where we finished the thir third one, which is by the Musée Picasso. The Musée Picasso that is just behind us. And it's also a beautiful uh, building. And so we're gonna maybe have a look. Yeah? Exactly. Okay. Bertrand, last week we were here, but we couldn't talk about this beautiful museum for a very good reason. We had those amazing macarons. Exactly, there was, <laughs> there was a big uh, emergency to, uh, to take care of. Yes. So this building is from the 17th century, and that was built by Sir de Fontenay. And he made his fortune with salt. Salt? Yes, at the time you had a tax on salt, and that was named La Gabelle. And he was making so so much money out of this uh, tax that we decided to nickname the house he was uh, just building. And this hotel particulier is named now Hotel Salé, so the salty house for that reason. So it's a museum that is dedicated to only one artist. Yes, it's rare. just for Picasso. It's true, it's very rare, but Picasso is not any artist, right? Yes. <laughs> But you, but you do have some pieces from his masters, for example, Suzanne. And, but it's mostly, it's mostly about uh, Picasso work. And we have another museum in Spain dedicated to him. Yes. So I'm just thinking how many, yeah, how many paintings Picasso made during his lifetime now. Yeah, well, contrary to another big genius of painting like uh, Da Vinci, who was, uh, was taking a long time to make each of his paintings. Uh, Picasso has, has made thousands, thousands yeah, of them. Yeah, probably. And the collection here uh, comes directly from his family, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, when he was living in Paris, he didn't live in here, though. Not in Le Marais. Uh, yeah. Maybe some of you guys know Montmartre. And I, I hope you do, because I took you guys inside the very studio of Picasso with Laure, but that was a few months ago already. So it's this museum was chosen to showcase the art collection donated uh, to the state by the Picasso family, right? Mm -hmm. But you, you're right, it's not where he lived. It's not like you visit actually the house of the uh, artist. It's not like when you've been to Montmartre to see his studio. But okay, so that's now the closed doors of the museum. Unfortunately, we cannot go now. But the good news of this week... Yes. On the 15th of December, museums are going to reopen in France. We can't wait. Yeah. Um, regular shops are going to reopen earlier than that on 28th of November. And we're going to have a, a, a great holiday season. Let's yes, hope. of course. We're going to enjoy that. So now we are behind the Museum Picasso. Yes. And we are entering in the proper Marais, huh? the one that we love with the Hotel Particulier, with the beautiful houses from the 17th century. Did we actually say what the Marais means? No, not yet. So that's my part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, le Marais is a French word that in English you would translate by either the swamp or by the marsh. So this is a rather flat land in Paris. You know Paris has hills, like the hill of Montmartre. But uh, here we are in a very flat and marshy land because we are just a few meters away from the River Seine. And we'll see that uh, by the end of the tour. So that was a marsh for quite many centuries. And today it's the trendiest part of Paris. 
right? Yes, and what changed? So we are in the 17th century. The king Henry IV decided to um, to build a lot of things. Actually, in French, we say that is the king that is the builder king, hein, le roi bâtisseur. Yeah. And he decided to change Paris completely. And starting here, starting in Le Marais. Why? Because yeah, you had this flat land open. Uh, so why not using it to put those amazing houses for the nobility in France? And that's what we're going to discover. So this amazing neighborhood made uh, for the families and friends of the King of France. Yeah, and in, in here, what is amazing is that you have all these hotels particuliers, these private mansions built for the French aristocracy. So there's a lot of harmony in the architecture and a very classy one too. We are kind of in the middle of Le Marais, Le Marais being pretty a big neighborhood. We started last week uh, in the north. Now we're going toward the south, so toward the Seine River. In between, there is Place des Vosges and Place des Vosges. You will see it's, uh, it's one of the, my favorite places in Paris. I know I'm saying that a lot, but on the way, I'm just uh, looking at, uh, I don't know, some street art mixed with a statue. So <laughs> that's weird. Interesting, anyway. So here we are just uh, just uh, by the park that we are we're looking out and there is this building beautiful building that was just restored it's le musée carnavalet exactly the musée carnavalet which is a museum of the history of paris it's run by the city and it's been closed forever and ever <laughs> true it was supposed to reopen this year in 2020 But with the COVID, obviously, uh, things have changed. So now I see that they are uh, talking about spring 2021, which hopefully uh, will actually happen because this is probably uh, all of Paris Guide's favorite museum since it is where we learn so much about the, the history of Paris from the ancient time uh, all the way till the uh, revolution, uh, Napoleon era, etc. So it's really a must-see museum. Uh, when it reopens and a gorgeous building so we came here with Marie we made another video in the Marais about World War II and this street was uh, already important and in our video we were talking about how the people were having privation and rationing tickets and things like that during the war So this neighborhood is also known for that, uh, yes, for the history exactly. linked to World War II and uh, to the Jewish family also that used to live in here. So you can look up this video. The beautiful Place des Vosges, the, the crown jewel of Paris. Yes. Probably the most beautiful square in all of Paris. That's, that's really just the, yeah, the best. It's so different. That's what I was uh, saying. It's very different. You see the architecture has nothing to do with the Osmanian building. Here it's pink, uh, reddish, orange. The colors are coming from the bricks they used to build this square uh, plaza. Uh, so it's in the shape of a square, which is uh, not usual in Paris. They're We like the round shapes or different types of shapes, but this is not very usual. And especially because it feels like complete, it's like a box somehow because it's closed. So you have just one street going that way. And uh, so here, and one other street passing here, but you feel like you are in a cocoon here, that you're protected. And that was exactly the purpose of this place to protect Wu, but of course the richest at the time and the noble families that used to live around here. This square, um, this square so was built during the time of Henry IV. So you remember that's the one, the, the builder king, uh, he made, uh, he decided to make this place de but in reality he died before the inauguration of this place and is his son, so Louis XIII, that you remember maybe from the Three Musketeers, uh, Louis XIII, that was the king at the time that this place was inaugurated. Now, the name Place des Vosges is intriguing because it used to be Place Royale. So why is it now Place des Vosges? That is because of the French Revolution. Exactly. Place Royale, so Royal Square, which 
you guys can imagine during the revolution was not uh, really a name that was popular anymore so instead it was named after the first département like a, a county in France les Vosges in the east which supported the French uh, revolutionary government and so they were honored and they have been honored since then even though the square was renamed Place Royale for a while after the revolution etc but I think for now we are set with the Place des Vosges and everybody likes it this way yeah even if it's complicated to when you see it uh, written there is a lot of S's yes. that, but we don't say so it's it, it's kind of weird like strange looking and strange you know the way we pronounce it yeah. that's French <laughs> it's, it's quite tricky it's uh, it is two S's you can't pronounce yes and on this place, so we have a statue of Louis XIII that is right in the middle. Many trees, many places for kids also. You have a playground over there. But most, to me, more importantly than any of this, you have the house where Victor Hugo, a famous writer, Victor Hugo used to live on Place des Vosges. There is a house that you can visit. It's free. And uh, it's very interesting. If you like the Miserable and Les Mis, or if you like the Hunchback of Notre Dame, you must come here and to visit the house of Victor Hugo. All right. Another district, another big horse. <laughs> <laughs> you like those statues, right? I love these big horse statues. And that's the dad. Yeah, that's daddy from uh, Louis XIV, the Sun King. Louis XIII, who uh, um, inaugurated that plaza, this square, during his engagement party. And he, uh, obviously the statue has been changed over time, but he still sits on a tiny horse for his big legs, but it's a pretty big statue anyway. <laughs> Hey, hey, look who's here, Mary Lynn. <laughs> Mary Lynn, <laughs> yes. And here we are still on Place des Vosges. And that's what I love about this amazing plaza. It's because, of course, around the park that we've just uh, been and seen, you have a lot of art galleries, contemporary art galleries. So it's a good mix of yeah, very bright colors and something completely yeah, surprising every time with uh, some kind of establishment and some kind of conservatism. So yeah, that's uh, what I like about this place. And gorgeous doors, beautifully restored arcades where yeah. we can see this polychromy with the bricks and the limestone of Paris. Yeah, it's quite unique. It's, it's, it makes the square very joyful to have all these uh, different colors. Yes, and uh, when the musicians also are coming here, for example, you have these violinists and also I think some guy with an harp coming here pretty often. The acoustic is amazing here. So they are singing, they are doing music and it's making Place des Vosges even more alive. This is the exit of Place des Vosges. You see how grand uh, <laughs> just the exit is. Now we get into one of those little streets going in South Marais and on the way beautiful uh, windows with jewelry and some precious little items because we are still uh, in a place that is chic that is uh, for yeah, people wealthy people let's say uh, so not as wealthy as in the 17th century where you could buy an entire house with a garden in here in Le Marais I think now just one apartment so that would be just one floor of those ancient houses will be already more than a million probably two millions uh, euros um, yeah so but Maybe, maybe someone is owning 
an entire house. I don't know. I wish maybe. Should we go and knock on doors and try to be invited? Ah, uh, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Say hey. Franchement, c'est magnifique. Je n'ai jamais vu un truc pareil. J'avoue. C'est incroyable. Ah, ça sent tellement bon. Et elle est tellement bonne. Ah, ben j'en doute pas. Alors là, <rire> magnifique. Ok, so we just, um, we just stop at a cheese shop where there is a magnificent tartiflette. <laughs> um, I don't know if you knew guys what is a tartiflette, but it's. You should. Yeah. You should know. It's everything we love, um, but they're usually not that big. <laughs> This will be for, I don't know, 30 people maybe. No, four. Four or five. <laughs> in church St. Paul, St. Louis. This church that is from the same time as the Place des Vosges, oh, we're talking still the 17th century, this church is very bright, very decorated. This style is um, an Italian style, as we say. So you will see a lot of detail on this church. I am watching my hands. <laughs> But one of them has nothing to do with religion, and I really want you, Bertrand, to have a look at it. Yes, it's on so the side. Have, I've heard about it. It's just right there. Alors, today, it seems that they clean the church because the masses will restart probably the first of the summer, I think, or mm -hmm. a little bit after. But now we can yeah, approach this place here, this pillar, and you will read something here. Can, can you see the, the letters? I can see. Yeah. Okay. So I will, I will uh, draw them. So it's Republic here. Republic. Here you have Française. And here you have Ou la mort. So Republic Française Ou la mort. French Republic or death. Oh. So this place, yeah, this place um, is very important. Uh, it's linked with La Commune. So we talked already about La Commune on different episodes. So it's a civil war that happened here in Paris, um, or civil war or civil fight, let's say. Uh, so in between people that were for the French Republic and some other that were, uh, uh, were supporting the empire, the second empire that we had under Napoleon III. Apparently someone came here in this church, wanted to let a message, And this is a tag, this is graffiti that was made, so in 1871. Still here, we don't really know how, probably the paint was oily enough to get inside uh, this stone that is limestone, that is um, porous, and, and it's still there, so it's still showing. We try to wash it off, right? you can tell the, the stone is uh, whiter than in other places, but it's still there. Now, St. Paul Saint Louis is coming from the fact that we had two churches that melt that are now only one parish. You had another church before, a very old one in St. Paul. We can see some of the ruins, some of the old stones out of this church over there. And this one was made, like I say, for the aristocracy. One of the priests that was preaching here, Mr. Bourdalou, made himself very famous because he was very good looking and <laughs> and he gave his name to a French pie that is a mix of pear and chocolate. And this is Mr. Bordalou, as you can see, pretty good looking. He was known uh, to seduce by his charm and by his sermons uh, a lot of uh, ladies from the aristocracy at the time. You can see the style of the church is very different from what we've shown you before. It's not at all from the Middle Ages, no longer the Gothic era. You see you have all these round arcades out there. 
you will see that over the altar there's a beautiful cupola with different levels and so you can see right here that it looks like we can see heaven or the sky the pillars are supporting it are the gospel writers and so this is really the style of the 1600s uh, inspired by the Italian Baroque movement and you don't see so many example of that style here uh, in Paris it's also a church that is known for its art pieces for instance the painting I'm showing you right now it was painted by the master de la croix Eugene Delacroix, who is one of the most important painters of the 1800s. Many of his paintings are at the Louvre. So in churches like that, you have pieces that are quite extraordinary. And the two side chapels on the side of the altar, they were very important. Marie, you've just told yes. us that this was the church of the aristocracy. Exactly. And so in the two chapels left and right of the altar were preserved the hearts of King Louis XIII and King Louis XIV. They were embalmed and preserved right here while the rest of their body was buried in St. Denis Basilica, the uh, royal mausoleum just outside Paris. But their hearts yeah. were preserved here. So th that's a tradition that is coming um, from Egypt, probably even maybe further, where we were uh, divided, let's say, some organs from the body, and then we were really mummified them. So it's the same for the French king, for the Italian, for all around Europe. Um, so it's something pretty common, let's say. And so you had the heart on one part, and sometimes the other organs in another part of France, then the rest of the body that was embalmed uh, was in Saint Denis. Here, the statue is representing Mary, and uh, Mary suffering from the absence, or from, in our case, the mourning of her son. You can see that she's holding only her empty arms, but you could imagine that maybe uh, a body or someone will be normally staying on her lap. So this um, statue is for all the mother that lost the kids. So it's a very sad representation of Mary, but at the same time one of the most beautiful statues that we have in Parisian church. Wow, thank you. So Bourdalou was so famous at the time that we decided to bury him here, under the church. So that's something also that's very common in European churches, that you have access to the crypt in the middle of the church, so just right here, under our feet. This is just something you can uh, lift, then you can go, you have some steps, a little staircase going to the crypt, and there you have some tombs. One is Bordalou, others could be from cardinals at the time. Actually, the very first priest that made a mass here was more than a priest. It was the Cardinal de Richelieu. Uh, and maybe <laughs> some of you guys remember from the Three Musketeers. It's this, it's the uh, bad guy. The bad guy, the enemy, uh, the main enemy of Louis XIII always wearing red with his little moustache and um, and in reality he was prime minister under Louis XIII and he did uh, cele celebrated the very first mass here in this church in St. Louis. So yeah, on the side of the church, usually a church you just enter and exit through the same doors. Um, in this case, you have a mini uh, red door that is leading us to the ancient charnier, so where they were keeping the body um, because you had a, always a symmetry attached to the churches before. And maybe you remember that is why um, during the time of the revolution, too many symmetries were full of bodies and we had to remove their bodies and we changed their location to be in the catacombs. Yes, and for that, you guys have a fantastic video filmed with Charlotte, yes. who is one of our experts on the macabre catacombs, <laughs> and it's really worth uh, watching. And here, so this passage that is outside of the church, um, 
was used, apparently it was used for a movie set, because they made those fake old posters like we are back in time. So I, I kind of like that in Paris because you always, you don't really know if you're in reality, in a fiction, in a book sometimes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> By this little passage we arrive now on Rue Saint-Paul and Saint-Paul was the name of the oldest church that was here even before the one we just saw. It was built in the 9th century, in the 9th century and here some of the stones are left uh, from this time. Alors, probably those were from the 12th and the 13th century because as you know churches evolving uh, with time are evolving so but here we wanted to have a little uh, vestige, little uh, little place where we could remember this church. We're leaving the Rue Saint-Paul to turn right into the Rue Charlemagne. And I like it just because it's named Rue Charlemagne, the emperor of France, Germany, the Western Empire from the late seven, early 800. And the street was renamed after it. It was not always named this way. And there is actually a school. We can see uh, some students yeah, or not in class, apparently. Oh, and the church temple just uh, rang. Just yeah. rang. So what do we have here? We have one of the biggest remain of the huge wall circling Paris, dating back from the 1100s, late 1100s, from King Philip Augustus, who actually was also um, King of France, and it is built at the same time as the Louvre. So yes. if you guys have visited the Louvre with us, you know how excited we are to show you the base dungeon of the of the Louvre inside the museum and so this is a huge part of the wall that was protecting Paris. Today kids are playing soccer or basketball, you name it, around it. Probably not realizing that they have an 800 Such, yeah. years old wall just by the side. Yeah, it's, it's really a piece of history that we have here. A massive piece of history. And the tower looks like a dungeon. Yeah, there was a big tower here. We can imagine there was probably a gate to enter Paris from the east and the street has just cut through mm. the, the tower. Yeah, maybe we can have a quick look from the bottom of the tower. Uh, the tower has the name Montgomery and that's because it used to be also the tower where a fam famous duke was in prison and this guy is the one that killed Henry II during the tournament. That's another story. That was an accident. Come on, he didn't mean it. You can't be too. So hard you're from you're the in guy. the Montgomery camp. You know that when he of was course. a prisoner, then he escaped from the tower. He went back to England, where he was from. Then he came good for back. Him. No, he came back again to make the war against Catherine de Medici. Well, good for her. <laughs> so first he killed um, the husband. Well, that's, Then that's, he's coming to bother not, the wife. That's not at all how this happened. It was an accident. <laughs> they were jousting for a party, it was a sport, and his spear, he was a wooden spear, broke, and a splinter about this big got into the king's eye. You, you can't mean to do that, it's impossible. Okay, so I agree with you for the accident, but Thanks. then, but then coming back from, for doing a religious war, that's another, that's another thing. Well, you know, what <laughs> happened, I mean, he was, uh, I believe he was from uh, Scotland, uh, the daughter, the, the queen of the Scots, Mary, Queen Mary was queen of France, uh, but her young husband uh, died, so she was sent back to Scotland. It's not, it's, it's a pretty tough time. <laughs> so now we are leaving Rue Charlemagne and entering uh, in a more quiet part of Le Marais. Still amazing houses, houses from 13, 14th century sometime that were restored in the 16th, and, uh, and, and now it looks like, yeah, we just jumping in the Renaissance time.
that's the great thing with this neighborhood that every street has an amazing building to to show there are tons of great stories for us guides to tell you <laughs> here and there a murder uh, an adultery a war a killing of a king you know it's yeah those, those fairy tale kind of stories yeah for us for us this is le marais is the perfect playground look at the street on the right marie this rue du prévost oh yeah i love i love the way how it's so narrow it doesn't look like a street it looks like a, a corridor without a roof yeah <laughs> you're right you transported back into the Middle Ages with streets like that. Yeah, true. I know there is another building at the end of this street that is amazing, the Bibliothèque Forney. So this is Bibliothèque Forney. So this is now a public monument where you can just get your books and stay and work for a little bit. But that used to be the house of one of the queen, La Reine Margot. And it's interesting Ooh, because queen we, Margot. Yeah, we, 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 we talked about Henry IV, but uh, he was married at one point with Marguerite de Valois. And there is this movie about her with Isabelle Adjani that is looking absolutely magnificent. But at the end of her life, so when she lived here, she had those two lovers and one killed another here in front of this door more killing just, more killing yes but for love this time um yeah so la reine margot um when she was living here she was not a queen uh exactly per se because she was replaced there is another queen that came after her uh, and that's marie de medici so that was uh, the second wife of uh, henry the fourth that was the queen at the time so let's say we were still calling her Reine Margot, but in reality she was no longer a queen. Actually queen. An actual queen. Marie, it looks like we're reaching the River Seine. Exactly, so that's the end of Le Marais. You can see this building from the garden, so you can really embrace on the entire thing and see how big it was. It's actually a little chateau. Uh, at the time, the term Châtelet can apply for this. So that means a tiny chateau, it's not the only one, huh? we have many chateaux uh, that are in Paris and it's a, it's a tiny piece uh, of uh, yeah, beautiful architecture. So we are now at the end of our tour of the 4th district, so thank you guys for watching us, thank you for following our tours every week. Um, so probably the next episode will be well, about the 5th, that's for sure. But there is also this special episode that we want to we want to do about Paris during the Roman time when it was called Lutetia. So that would be yeah, that would be one of the next episodes, and uh, yeah, and maybe other surprises too. What is great with these tours is that like you guys can have a look. We go from gardens to chateau, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Uh, I know Marie. There's also an, an episode about the another episode about chateaus by the Loire Valley that is being prepared with some that's, footage that's, that's part of the surprise is sure yes footage that's from be, last summer mm -hmm, that's going to be a great uh yeah a great episode i'm very yeah i'm very excited to show but you that guys. it's it's pretty hard to edit uh, all these episodes though <laughs> we we can't say when it will be ready but uh but you it, guys, will, be. it yes. will be soon it will be soon well thank you so much you can still share on um, those type of videos with friends with families you can keep uh just um the link be below you can uh, continue just yeah supporting us by all the ways you can so thank you so much guys and wow. a massive thanks yes for all of you supporting us yes. every week yes thank uh, you we, thank you we love you guys <laughs> really thank you bye Au revoir.